Welcome to a sports edition of the IAC Video Podcast and uh, guess what, well this is entirely dedicated to the 2018 Russia World Cup. Now trust me, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will be in action. It's going to be their sixth appearance at the Mundial and Nigerians are very, very interested in this particular episode. The Nigerian team, the Super Eagles, who are ranked 47 by FIFA, are going to the World Cup to showcase what Nigeria offers, I tell you, is going to be interesting and Nigerians are looking to how far these Nigerians can perform in the Russia 2018 World Cup. Now it's a big, big question talking about how well and how far Nigeria can go at the 21st edition of the World Cup. And to indeed break things down with us today is Undu Ekre. Good to have you. Thank you, my pleasure being here. And also we have uh, Tony Momodi. Always a pleasure talking sports, especially the World Cup here. This is Wisdom, and I tell you it's going to be interesting, just watch out. Now, now let's quickly go straight uh, into the bigger talking point, uh, talking about uh, the World Cup. Now it's no news that Nigeria have indeed uh, made preparations uh, for the World Cup, which indeed includes uh, playing a couple of friendly games. Now you want to roll down the list, well, a victory for Nigeria against uh, the uh, Argentines and also well a victory against uh, Poland also. Now it was a draw uh, in some of the other games talking about a game against uh, Congo and well for some games are uh, not a good result like that against uh, the Three Lions of England and that against the uh, Czech Republic. Now what exactly do you have to say about how Nigeria has performed at this friendly games? I would rather look, like to look at it as basically from the point of view of preparations. And if there are some comparisons to make, you certainly see that um, we've done better than we've ever done in preparing our team. So I would like to think that uh, the matches played were quite indicative, showing some few a bit of a bit of what Nigeria can do and what we need to do uh, to protect ourselves and then play a better role in the competition. I guess the coaches are going to work very hard to uh, close up those gaps and uh, fashion out the team in the most appropriate way they can respond uh, during the competition. Now, lots of people will definitely want to ask, you know, look at uh, the capacity of the Super Eagles. Now, it is no news that the Super Eagles of Nigeria are going to this World Cup with the youngest side. That's exactly what FIFA have said. The inspiring thing about this team is the fact that uh, they're very confident. Uh, they're predictable. A uh, large number of the players uh, are not really known globally. So that uh, element of surprise, uh, which makes Nigeria a very deadly team to play against, mm. is going to be there for the Super Eagles. And uh, if, if you also look at the coach, they've got a very experienced coach, a better NFF, uh, who have put everything in place just to ensure that the team is not distracted gives you this gut feeling that the Super Eagles are going to be super at Russia and the fact uh, that also uh, the blend of experience and uh, someone like Mikel Obi who has been to the World Cup now he's leading a bunch of young players he wants to prove a point that yes he's playing in China but he's still got a lot of things to offer other Super Eagles players also have a point to prove uh, for them just the recent uh, signing of uh, a table uh, shows you the direction this team is going they've got quality players that are going to shock the world in Russia. Well that's a very big one talking about uh, shocking the world in uh, Russia but perhaps uh, we can take it one at a time by looking at the teams but then when you still take a look at this Nigerian side well wisdom does this side uh, give you any detri feelings uh, you know can you look at the side and say we are indeed good to go? Yes, the Super Eagles of Nigeria, um, they are very much good to go. Uh, looking at uh, the, the, the actions they always put up when the uh, occasion calls for it, despite uh, the lackluster performance they put up during the uh, preparation, the friendly matches, I tell you, you can't uh, count on that uh, lackluster performance because Nigeria always rise to the occasion when it matters most. Most especially when they are put uh, back to the pressure, I tell you, they can perform and shock the world just like the, the 1994 squad. Now you've introduced us something talking about uh, lackluster performance, but uh, come on now, Ndu, as a sports enthusiast, well, where exactly would you want to look at this team and say, well, perhaps uh, the coach at Gerard Raw has got to do some more work? Um, well, I would, I would like to look at, for instance, let me respond to something, issues that have also uh, cropped up in the discussion. I don't think we need to overrate our team. 
uh, in my heart of hearts, I like to see the Super Eagles I'm seeing today as the team of the future. I, I, I like to anticipate that they're going to perform well in the competition, but I'm not sure they're going to shock the world. Having said that, um, our defense, I noticed that area balls were issues to, uh, you know, to us. Dead balls were issues to our team. And uh, they were not, or during the preparation, preparatory matches, they were not scoring goals. So it is something to worry about. Perhaps it is a system we are playing or something else, we will decide to play two at attacker, two strikers that may improve. But as it is, there is something to be done about the attack and then the defense. Well, but then, well, uh, Tony also looking at the fact that you know he's talked about the attack and the defense. Well, can we go to sleep and say, well, there are some other departments uh, of uh, this super rigorous that you know, are, you know, indeed good to go? Having covered uh, football for 20 plus years, uh, there's something you have to know about football. Uh, the friendly matches do not necessarily tell you what's going to happen. A striker may not score in 10 matches past, but gets to the competition and becomes the top scorer. Uh, football is that unpredictable. So you, you cannot say, yes, the Eagles have not been scoring goals, the defense line not as superb as you want them to be. But when, there's a different feeling when you get to the World Cup proper. Uh, there's, when you hear the national anthem, you, you see the jersey already is being sold, most loved jersey in the world currently, tells you that there are a lot of things that are going to make these players inspired. And uh, the, the, the beautiful thing about Nigeria is the fact that this team is always unpredictable. Yes, you said uh, we should not overrate them, but this, this is a time to give them all the support they need. Uh, at times, things could be psychological. And when the tournament kicks up proper, that's when you'll be able to rate your team, not pre tournament or post tournament but the tournament proper and I, yes I, I understand when you say you don't want to overrate your team but we're talking about Nigerian national team Nigeria has been super power when it comes to football it didn't just start yesterday and the fact that you're not seeing some notable names does not mean Nigeria is not going to do well and Nigeria does best when it has its back on the mm. wall and that is very instrumental now, now, now that's, a, that's a big one and talking about uh, the hopes of over 200 million Nigerians being invested in uh, just about uh, 23 people who definitely have got to prove themselves uh, right but then there's also one man who has you know been placed uh, you know as head of the saddle and that uh, definitely has got the responsibility to indeed uh, design uh, tactics now come and talk to us at uh, wisdom about this man a German friend you know a German tactician uh, talking about uh, you know a raw well from what you've seen of his tactics does he come across to you as somebody who can indeed lead the super egos uh, to a very decent performance at the world cup uh, Genentua, uh is a good tactician ever since he was uh, hired as a super egos coach our fortune has lit on for good but before uh, Genentua came in nigeria couldn't qualify for uh, the nation's cup and he was called in and he qualified us with one match spare to the World Cup uh, proper and we never lost a game. I tell you that um, Genetro has uh, the ability, you have the finesse, you have the tactics to, to lead Nigeria to uh, a good position, if not surpassing the 1994 uh, squad. Now talking about 1994, well that was the debut of the Super Eagles of Nigeria. However, do you know that Iceland has qualified for their first ever FIFA World Cup tournament in 2018 FIFA World Cup? And Iceland makes a history as the least popular country to ever compete at the World Cup finals. Now the Iceland team will be playing its first World Cup match with the Argentine team on the 16th of June and their second match with the Nigerian team on the 22nd of June. Now, gentlemen, well, this is uh, one side that lots of people, you know, say could just uh, indeed uh, be the side to determine lots of things, you know, whatever would happen in that group. Well, they can become the very boogie team and, um, you know, who caves in uh, when they can or, you know, under pressure, or perhaps that uh, they can become that uh, spoiler, uh, just like they were taking out a team like England at the Euros? I think, I think they have all it takes to do that. And um, any of the uh, uh, team in their group will um, despise them to, in their, to, their, in the, to their own period. Um, Iceland is organized. This is their first time. And nobody should uh, take the fact that it's their first time and then underwrite them. Nigeria went to the World Cup the first time in 1994. and. Um, was beating international rated teams. Took out, took out a team like Bulgaria, took Bulgaria, out a team like Greece. With the world European best player playing. 
at the time and it dealt with um, Italy, well, inexperienced, took us out, and Argentina and all that. So coming first time is not an issue. Now, what I'm looking at is the depth in their team, the organization in their team. Now, whatever they don't have in star players, they make it up in the cohesion in their team. And I think they are going to really give problems in that group. All right. In as much as yes, I agree uh, that they did well the Euros. Uh, they announced themselves. I, I think they're not going to have that kind of luxury in the World Cup proper. We're talking about the World Cup, not the Euros this time around. That element of surprise which they had in the Euros is not mm. going to be there that, anymore. That, that's something uh, very key. Uh, and uh, because of that, uh, they're going to be facing very talented sides. First of all, they're so lucky they'll be facing Argentina for their first game. Uh, God help them if, if they're not well up and their 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 morale, you know, destabilized, and they'll be facing the Super Eagles next, uh, which is no easier task for them. So I, I think they're going to be the whipping boys, especially if psychologically, after losing, most likely losing to Argentina and Nigeria taking their own pound of flesh, then they'll be left with no option but being the whipping boys of the team. Yes, you want to say Nigeria came out in the World Cup 1994 and surprised other teams, but if you look at the quality of the Nigerian team in 94, uh, you cannot compare to the Iceland team right now. And uh, they've lost that element of surprise because we saw them in Euro, so everybody knows them. Uh, and so it's not going to be easy uh, pie for the Iceland national team. I don't think they have lost the organization. The, the organization in that team is key. Um, I do not think that um, Argentina is going to have it easy. My prediction is if Argentina wins, it's going to be, they, they, they're going to suffer to win. Mm. You, now, see, no. you see this, this Iceland, uh, Iceland team, you know, they, you don't call them uh, uh, newbies in, the, in this uh, World Cup. You, you can say they are Minos, but they are no more Minos in World Cup. Look at their playmaker and the person of Gifo Sigurdsson. Um, the uh, Gummerson and uh, all the Saints they have. One thing they have in, in, their, in their squad is this team play. Look at uh, the, the taking back uh, when Leicester won uh, the league, they had no star player, but they have this team play. Without uh, putting so much of our attention on this Iceland team, let's not lose focus of the fact that yes, Nigeria making their sixth appearance at the Mundial. And we're thinking right now, can we have something better than we've had in 1994, in 1998, in 2002, and the other two editions? Quite interesting. But then, Nigeria is not the only African country going to the Mundial. We've got four other countries. We've got Morocco, we've got Senegal, we've got Egypt, who are making a big return to the world. Up, you know, after about 35 years, and that's indeed that's something. So, what do you think about the African chance at the World Cup? You see, the Africans, um, they, they have a good chance in the World Cup. Uh, taking a look at uh, what happened in 2002 when Senegal shocked France, defending champion, coming into that, looking at uh, also what uh, Ghana did in their last uh, appearance at the World Cup. Um, Africans have a, quite a good chance uh, to. to, to do Africa proud at this edition of the World Cup? I'm actually tipping uh, the Moroccan team and the Nigerian team to go far in this World Cup. I think uh, for the African teams, I think it's not all rosy for all of them. Uh, let's go to Group A, where we have Russia, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and Uruguay. Mm. Uh, that group, you, you want to say Egypt has a chance of qualifying. The only serious threat there is Uruguay in Group A. In Group B, where you have Morocco, Iran, Portugal, and Spain. The possibility of an African team coming out of that group is quite slim quite because slim. you've got Spain, awesome team, Portugal, they've got the best player in the world, Ronaldo, which is going to make it near impossible for Morocco to have one over Portugal. So you look at that group, you see it's going to be a very tight one for Africa. In Group D, where Nigeria holds sway, Nigeria, Argentina, Japan, and Croatia, the fight is going to be between these three teams, Iceland probably playing the spoiler in that group. In group uh, H, where you have Poland, Senegal, Colombia, and Japan, that group is the only group I would say is a sure bet for Africa if the Senegalese do not miss the point. Uh, because if you look at Poland as a team, uh, the African Senegalese can take for size. Uh, they, you look at Colombia, that's the only team you can say, okay, probably might have some slight edge because of that South American flavor they've got in their game. But uh, mm. obviously, you, you can count Senegal in, in that group. In Group G, where you have Belgium, England, Tunisia, and Panama, it's a very dicey group. Yes, the three Lions have been awesome of late, but it's no guarantee. This is the World Cup. 
Uh, we know the England in the English team uh, for the very first time. Probably they are lucky this time. Their media has not overhyped them like they used to do in the past, putting excess pressure on the three lions. You are definitely, say. without doubt, to have you know given us a whole lot about the African side. But yeah. my worry is that these African teams, we've seen them go back 1994, go back 1998. We've seen the African team press itself, the strong buttons himself. 1994, the Cameroonian side came to the World Cup. You know, you know, when we all we were all thinking that they were going to build on the yeah, success of 1990, when yeah. they came to the World Cup, guess what? They wrote their jerseys. They you know they wrote their names with crayons. You know, and it tells you how bad the preparations yeah. were. Yeah. Nigerian team, Ghana team, back at the World Cup in 2014, they had to fly cash, millions of dollars, in private jets just because of issues. So that's exactly my worry with the African player. You know, with the African teams, good players. Great guys, great psychology, but all of a sudden, well, everything goes back. All the African teams come short when it comes to organization. So when there is a demand, the serious I, I, demand. I think I disagree when you no. say all African teams come short. Actually, all of them. We, we know the, the, the North African teams yeah. are always. You might have prepared. an improvement with them, but even at that, it is not up to the level that can compete at the world level and win. Do you understand? What you are saying actually is in comparison. Comparing the North African teams with West African teams, you rate the North African teams higher. Okay. But on the world stage, still not compared to what you yeah, expect from the Italian side, from the Swiss side. They will, they will, side. They will, they will be missing. You but, see, but, uh, because you need a good psyche, you need a good organization, you need all the things that can make you fall back to take pressure, organize yourself, and even determine to fight back. You see, I tell you that this super egos. Um, uh, this time around, I've been well organized, well prepared by the uh, Nigerian Football Federation. Uh, I was listening to. Uh, to the best of our knowledge. Uh, Nobody yes, knows I, the I was listening to the NFF chairman. Uh, over $2.8 million have been raised to support uh, the Super Eagles. I tell you that um, what we experienced last time about finance issues, I don't think it will occur this time around. Even just look at the organization, uh, you have not had any issues about finance. The players coming out to say there's no money in the, in the camp. Well, I tell you, they have sorted these things out even before now, even before the World Cup. They have sorted every allowances that is due for the players. So I don't think we'll have any issues with finance come this uh, Russia. I, I agree. What we are comparing with our yardstick is what we used to be. What I'm looking at is what will you be able to do at the world stage? Uh, for instance, take, take Germany. Germany went to confederation with a whole lot of unknown players. And they performed well. That is to say, as at that time, they were already getting ready with their preparations. We started our preparations when? Well, maybe during the competition, during the qualification matches and the rest of them. But I think that we are still not there. We have improved from what we used to be, but we are still not there. What is the quality of the players we have taken to the competition? What is the experience? Now, now that's indeed a very big question. Talking about the quality of you know the players, you know Africans, you know are indeed at parading at the Mundial. But one man comes to mind. Well, talking about the best player in Africa, Mohamed Salah. But then we already know of the issues that he has got, particularly with uh, his. Uh, you know, uh, you know, health, and um, I, I want to believe the Egyptians are hoping and praying that he will be fit enough. I, I think it's a very sad commentary uh, for a team like Egypt to depend on just one player. Yes, I know every every team seems to have a star player or a playmaker who carries the body or carries the team along, but a, a, a quality side should have more than one uh, star player to carry the t uh, playmaker for the team. It's, it's going to be very sad if Egypt, at the end of the day, gets bundled out of the World Cup simply because Moussa. Uh, wasn't fit enough mm. and I think that that's going to be the true test of how serious uh, the African teams are. We've talked about uh, organization, how prepared they are or not, but I think this is going to be a very good test for the Egyptian national team, the Pharaoh, seven-time African champions, means they've got something going for them. But uh, uh, coming back to the Super Eagles of Nigeria, uh, looking at the quality of players, you, you would say yes, not as deep, not as strong, not as experience as the 94 now, score. Now, I just want you to indeed, uh, you know, land on that particular one and then let's talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's leave a word of advice uh, for the Super Eagles uh, coach. Well, 
if you are to indeed advise the Super Eagles coach at this point in time, well, what particularly would you be telling the Franco Jam? I think I'll be telling him to stick to the winning team. No need of altering the winning team. Uh, go with the players you know can deliver and not players that you think can deliver, but players that have shown over the qualification matches and uh, shown that yes, they can deliver when it matters most. Okay, you now come on, Mister. You see, the Super Eagles, uh, our advisor, the uh, the German tactician to, to stick more of uh, the formation he used uh, against England the second half we saw a change of formation to 3-5-2 where the wing backs really really supported the attack and also uh, issue sort out this uh, selection problem about a uh, mythic combination I think if you saw that uh, I think we also have uh, an issue with uh, our striker I think uh, Dodger Ingalo is having issues with scoring goals right, uh, right now and I don't know, maybe uh, Keleshina Hianacho should be tried that or Simeon Wanko but uh, I think you should just stick to a, a 3 a 5 2 formation which gives the team balance. I totally agree. Um, to a reasonable extent, I should say, but I should, he should clarify his pattern and now work to deepen that pattern. Now, uh, uh, he's done enough experiments, he tried a number of systems and then he should choose one now so that in the psyche of the players they are not confused well this is the world cup where teams are very very prepared and you want to expect that your team nigeria should also you know have uh, learned something and of course uh, tidy themselves up and indeed get very prepared as well uh, as we have uh, seen the super Eagles fully funded and supported by the nigerian football federation and this presidency have supported them. We also, we at I Am Change Monetary Organization, do expect that the Super Eagles will do more than we have been given, surpassing the 1994 edition. We expect that going forward, that the Super Eagles will bring back the cup to Nigerians. Yes, Welcome. there is no end to improvement. AIC is working for improvement in human capacity and various areas and all of us should support this. We should continue to improve and just do like the Japanese, continuous improvement until we get there. Now it's a good thing you talked about uh, capacity building and that's exactly what the Nigerian Football Federation have done. And you know, according to the president of the Federation, he talked about uh, building football houses in a six geopolitical zone. And what a way you want to say for, you know, you know, for the NFF to make their own contributions towards the development of the game. I think it makes a lot of sense. And um, it will also give them opportunity to harness all the resources and the potentials and the talent that we have scattered all over Nigeria. Uh, for me, I, I don't think it's uh, worth celebrating. That's what their task is supposed to do, build football uh, development. And I, I think Without but, doubt, but, you want to say but, well but, that but, these are policies for, for that me, can indeed drive the, the, development. The timing of the policy it is what I don't like. Despite the timing, I think also is a, is a welcome development. This is, is about a grassroots development. It is. This is a structure he's creating. Whether Maju Pinik is there tomorrow is a structure that, 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 that's, that's, that's going to stay. Issue. How, so, how, how well will they continue after the World Cup or after the elections it will proper? Be, Nigeria does not end in Abuja or Lagos or Kano or Potakot. We should learn to get this country, every side of it, working. And that is what is going to make us great. You see, well, if the initiative right. well, gets is, down to a grassroots, that, that's itself. what we are talking about policies. You see, when the government, when the government make the right policies, this is what I am change is advocating for. When you make the right policies, the structures on ground, everything will work seamlessly to every other sectors of the economy. I so thank you so much, gentlemen, for being a party to the discussion today. Thank you so much, Indu, a sports enthusiast, and uh, also, well, thank you uh, for a sports writer to name a model. Well, I'm very sure that time you'll be looking forward to the World Cup. And uh, yes, uh, we've come to the end of our very first uh, video podcast, uh, and it's all about uh, the World Cup 2018 in uh, Russia. Now, without that, we know that the Super Eagles have been energized. Without that, we know that the Super Eagles have a uh, as much as they can and they have the support of all Nigerians to indeed lift the trophy. We'll see you again some other time.